seconds. And he no, gets it. it doesn't. Wow. wow. It doesn't. Welcome to the Drop In with Pindy podcast from Warriors TMA Academy, a podcast for everyone from business inspirational leaders, combat sports enthusiasts, martial artists, and fitness fans. Together, we can build our self-discipline, confidence, and positive mindsets through great leaders. Now, here's your host, coach and former pro fighter, Pindy Matahar. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of the Dropping With Pindi podcast. Uh, I want to welcome myself back here for a new fresh season of podcasts. We have a great line of guests here for this new season that we've got coming up. Uh, and I'm proud to announce that we're going to be setting up a new season with the one and only Mr. Jacob, everyone from Gracie Baja, Birmingham. And he is going to be setting off the, kicking off the new season of podcasts that we've got here lined up. As you can tell by where we are in the film, in, with our film crew, we've got a new little layout that we're going to be trying out for this season. Um, and I'm super excited to get started and kicking straight off with yours truly, Mr. Jacob, everyone. So first of all, everyone, just want to welcome Jacob. I've known Jacob for not very long, but a short period like of time. Two years. Two couple of years. Um, and I, someone I've wanted to obviously get on earlier on in our podcast season because everything that you've achieved in your, in your career lately, in the past, um, has been phenomenal. Um, and I'm super excited to hear about your story and about how it all how you all came about the idea of making jujitsu, making the art itself your way of life. But you've not been in the UK as as long as some people think. I thought you were here a lot longer. And then when you told me your story, I was like, oh man. <laughs> and, and what you've achieved in that short period of time compared to what some people have achieved in their lifetime is just unbelievable. So I just want to say, first of all, welcome you to the podcast. And I want to hear about where it all started from back home in Poland. So, so everything started up around t between 2009 and 2010. Uh -huh. So like 2009, December and 2010, like January, like, I just remember that, like, when I was like 12, I remember like my Christmas present was the key. So I just remember oh, that sweet. was like, it was kind of like December. Yeah. Like I feel like very beginning of December, like between, between and the end of December. And basically everything started from my father who really wanted me to start doing something. So okay. like when I hit like 12, my father was telling me like, oh, like it's good to like find some activity outside of the school. Yeah. So like I tried like different things. Like I remember when I was like eight or seven, my father signed, signed me up for the judo. But like, I didn't really enjoy that. And I think the reason why it wasn't because of the like judo itself, but yeah. it was more as, I remember when I started, like I was, I quite could see if the teacher really wants me to teach something and he doesn't. Yeah. So like, I was never like very quick guy. So like, I wasn't very sharp with the techniques and everything. So I could see that the teacher was like, kind of like selecting people. So if you're like kid that catches up to things fast, he was, he was like, yeah, he was focusing on that kid. And then like, if I, if I would know, like, imagine like if the kid knows he hits yeah. something back, like very bad. And then like the teacher's like, that's great, Jacob, keep going. I'm like, yeah. nah, I know, like, so I didn't really enjoy that. And then basically when I was like 12, my father just told me like, listen, Jacob, there's like three things that I want you to sign you up. Okay. I don't want you to do a striking or anything because like, I'm your father, so I don't never want you to see like when you Person. knock out or something and like punches are bad for your yeah. head and everything. So he's like, listen, there's three things, judo, wrestling or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I remember like at the very beginning, like my father as well, like he put everything on the, like on the laptop and he's like, listen, like this he put well. like three clips. He's like, this is judo. This is wrestling. This is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And then, like, I remember like with judo, that was already like, no, because like yeah, I already the, knew like, oh, I, yeah, past experience. I was like, I will try something else first. And then if I don't like all three, I I'll probably stick with the judo. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So like, I was like, okay, let's, let's do wrestling then because it was stand up and everything. So yeah. I was like, okay, so like I'll do wrestling. And then my father tried to call the coach, but like he couldn't get to him. Like from some reason it was like very hard to get to it. Okay. So I was like, okay, fine. So then my father's like judo. I'm like, nah, like at first I want to try this. And he's yeah. like, and I said like, what's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? He says, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is a mix of all these, yep. but you have like as well as submissions and everything. So I was like, okay, so 
I have two things to just focus on the stand up, and I have the third one that focuses well on the ground. And like actually, like taking someone down doesn't stop the fight. Yeah. So it's like, oh, that must be interesting. So then, like, I remember, like, I came for the first class, and my first class actually was in Nogi, and it was taught by like one of the guys who was a blue belt there. Okay. And I remember, like, I came for the first class. It was like Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday, and basically, there was no one who was like my age there. Because, like, when Jiu-Jitsu started in my city, like, I think he was there for, like, three or four years. Like, my uh -huh. professor just recently got his purple belt. So it was wow. like, yeah, so, like, there was him, there was two or three blue belts, and that was it. Right. And a gym full of white belts. And people who want to do MMA and everything. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I was quite tall already. So it was like, I think like 170. So it's like, I don't know how many feet that is. No idea. My maths ain't great when it comes to that. Probably like five something, five okay. something. So at so what, I, what, you're about 10, 12 years old now? Yeah, I was 12 years 12 old. Days, yeah, yeah, 12 years old, 170. Fuck <laughs> so, I was, <laughs> so I was quite tall. Like I was as tall yeah. as my professor. Wow. Okay. So that was the other thing as well. Like he was the main guy there and I was like, oh, it's my height. So like, yeah, even yeah. though physically he was like strong guys, so I was like, oh, like I have some You've chance, got... right? He was like 60 something. So I was like, oh, if the main guy is like this, that means he must work in, right? Yeah. If the, most of the guys, the average is like 80 kilograms. There you go. And like 180. So I was like, okay. So I did my first class and I remembered that like, there's no one my height or anything. Mm -hmm. So like, I was like, my father was like, oh, I don't know, like, if you should, because there's no kids class or anything. But I said, listen, do one more class and then we see. So then like, I came for another class. This time with, with, I met with, like, my professor. Okay. And basically for, like, first two, three weeks, I was, like, just training with, like, color belts, like, blue belts right. and everything. But then, like, when I get more comfortable, I started training with the other people as well. Okay. And from there, like... I was just keep going, keep going until like I got here really. Like I moved here in UK in 2017. So like I got my brown belt and I moved here. Wow. Okay. So yeah. And like it was like. So because obviously I was, I, was, I was reading up on your history of like, because I saw uh, you've obviously traveled around. You started you started competing obviously in, in, in back home in Poland. Yes. Um, Obviously. I, was, um, I remember you saying this in class once, you didn't really, you took it seriously, but not as seriously right up until you got your purple belt. Yes. So as a blue belt, yes, you were still competing, you're doing your, your, yeah, your so, thing, but you took it to that next level where you then started traveling mm -hmm. outside of Poland in order to obviously get to that next stage. Because some of your achievements, like I was just reading here, like obviously you've won quite a few titles, obviously European champion in 2016, pro, world pro champion in 17, um, and that's just a couple. You got your Nogi European, uh, European Championship in 2015. So there's quite a few achievements. Just And this is before you took it to that next level as a purple belt. So. Yeah, so it's like the way how it started was like, because in Poland, Jesus was just growing. Like mm -hmm. I feel like 2000, like I think everything in Poland started like 2004, 2005. So I think like UFC and everything. Yeah. So then like most of the towns, like there was a bit more on the West going okay. on but on the east there was so much happening so like i remember like i was almost a blue belt when the first like kids classes started in my gym so oh, really wow. yeah so like it was a tough start so like i remember like i couldn't do any tournament before i hit 16. so because okay, there was no kids yeah there was like, no yeah, there was yeah. no kids competition and i remember like there was one competition like in poznan in 2015 uh, sorry 2012. so okay. like i was 15 and like i sh there was one competition I could do. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to do this competition. Yeah. Like after three years of training as well. So like I won this competition and like, I remember like, it was like a bit different for me because I remember everyone was talking about competition back in the day. Like yeah. everyone in my gym, like even though they weren't like, they did want to become world champion, everyone want to be like, oh, I'm going for the Polish nationals. I'm going for that. I'm going for that. For like for three yeah. years, I'm just listening about this competition. I'm like, wow. I don't even know like, what uh, yeah like yeah. i don't know what to expect you know what i mean so like i remember i did this like first competition and then that was like 2012 and then i remember for like first year i was competing in the competition for the 16 years old okay but like i was 15 so basically i was like signing up plus i needed the extra thing from my parents that like if something happens to me it's on the, me yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so the, just in case so then I started competing a bit more and I started doing well. Like not well, well, like I was getting to like third, second, second, yeah. like 
I couldn't win couldn't. the finals, but like I was doing well. And like, and there was the only platform when I could compete with someone my age, yeah, same weight and everything. So I remember like at the very beginning, I wanted to compete, not necessarily to like to win something, but you was like some of my size. I want to yeah. see how good I am because usually you're just part of adults. You know what I mean? And like average Polish person is like 80 kilograms. So it's like... <laughs> So it's like, I was like, okay, so like I have a good training for that. You know yeah. I mean? Like if I need to compete in the division of like 70 kilograms or something. You're going to destroy it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to be good. Yeah. Cool. So, so I got to like competing more as a blue belt and like as a blue belt, I took competition a bit more seriously in Poland, but it still wasn't like, I want to go abroad or something because like no one from my, from yeah. my teammates went to anywhere compete. Yeah. yeah, to compete just in Poland. So what, when as a blue, I know obviously as a blue, did you have some any sort of inkling then that this is where you really want to pursue a career into it as such, or was that only when you got your purple belt? Like in, in so like I always had something back in my head like I maybe I could do it, but yeah. like it was always more as like I'll do well in Poland and then like that's it because like in Poland it's just Polish people, so like yeah, you don't really know how good you are. You know what I mean? So like I remember like. I got to 2013, like I got my blue belt and then I started competing more. And then like I did one tournament, Polish Nationals. And Polish Nationals, what's important to understand is that like they're big. Right. Because everyone who's the best is going to compete on the Polish on Nationals the because we all go like this Polish Cup, Polish Nationals. There's two competitions and the most important. It's uh -huh. almost like Pan Ams and World Championships wow. of Poland, right? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I remember like I signed up uh, in juvenile and adult division. Okay. Because my professor told me like, if you want to, they do allow both. you to do both. And I think you should do both because you're doing well in the juveniles. So I was like, yeah, I will do, Let's it. do it. So like, I think I did 12 fights. Oh. Yeah. So like I did like seven fights in adults and every fight was like a, a beast. Yeah. It was crazy because like I was 16, right? So like, yeah. I was like, I was competing and then like, that was the first time when I like, tried to quit weight as well, because like I was 79, 78 in the juveniles, but then 76 was adults or 82. So because like, I never compete with adult division, I was like, man, that's going to be scary. You're not going to you're not gonna go up to the 80s. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But basically what I did was I didn't eat. So like I was eating way less. So like, I remember like I would eat like a yogurt, like as a breakfast, then I would eat some uh, vegetables and then that's something it. small on the dinner. So like for like, Four weeks, I was like, like, I remember, like, I have no clue how to do it proper. And, like, I wouldn't ask anyone because yeah. I'll be like, they're going to tell me not to do it. So I'm not going to tell anyone. So, yeah, so, like, that's it. Yeah, I did, like, 12 fights. And, yeah. man, like, I remember, like, it was so tough for me. And then, like, after that, like, I lost the final in my division, yeah. in the juvenile and in the adult as well. So, like, it sucked. Uh, but, yeah, I was like... But how was it yeah, with the 12? Because 12 fights is a lot. After yeah. one fight, you're feeling already, like, I don't know about you, but after, when I competed as a white belt, I remember my first competition coming out of it, forearms were on fire, I was just drained. And then going into a second fight, you're already feeling fatigued. But yeah, the worst you thing having was, 12 fights, how, yeah. how did you get through that? What? Man, I just wanted to win. <laughs> it's like, this mindset. Yeah, yeah. And like, first was adults. So that was tougher for me. Because I feel like right. if they'll be all the way around. You would have been. Yeah, like I feel like I will go through it. Maybe I will win. Maybe I will lose again. But like I will feel better mentally because yeah. I'll be like, okay, I did my job in my juvenile yeah. was more yeah. important for me because I was juvenile. Sure. And then like adults. So like I remember like because I never win like nationals in juvenile. I remember uh -huh. like it was keeping my mind for a long time because I was like, man, like if I do win juveniles in nationals, I shouldn't think about More, yeah, yeah, yeah i shouldn't yeah, think yeah. too much yeah of course 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 so like i remember like a year later in 2014 when i was competing in uh, uh -huh. again uh -huh. i said to my professor like i want to do again i want to do juveniles and i want to do adults and he's like no just focus on adults and i was like but i want to win both well, yeah he's like listen like you're turning 17 and next you're gonna be 18 so it's not gonna matter what yeah. you're gonna do on the juvenile so like just do adults and i remember like i won that year and then and I, I, you won the adults. I won the adults. Perfect. Yeah, I yeah. won the adults. And like somehow we went easier than before because like year before, like I was struggling. Every fight I was struggling. I was like such a hard time. I never think. Yeah. But then I got a bit of experience and then like everything went easier. Like I have like one, I have one fight which was tough in a semifinal. Like I remember the semifinal was tough and then like everything else was quick. 
It's got bah, okay. bah, bah, bah. Yeah. And a month later, I have like Abu Dhabi shows. And like, I remember like as a juvenile, like everything that I did was someone helped me out. So yeah. like, you shouldn't compete, but I will help you out. So like the same thing with organizer, like mm. he did the same thing for me. Like he was like, listen, you shouldn't compete, but I spoke with them and you can compete. Okay. And then like I won my division and then I lost to, I lost to like blue belt. So like it was bad for me because like they combined blue belt and purple. I beat two purple belts just to lose the, the blue belt. But like the guy was big, the guy was right, huge. Right, yeah. okay. Like okay. I will show you the fall after, but like the guy was like. Just, just a beast. Proper, yeah, he was a yeah, beast he was. and like, he was very good. Like Technically as well, would you say like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like, okay. he was like ultra heavy or super oh, heavy. Yeah, okay. yeah, but like he was so flexible. He was flexible and he played color and sleeve and everything. So he wasn't the type uh, of the guy who's just strong. Gonna like, just be CM yeah, Pan. Yeah, yeah, like. Top yeah, position, like, yeah. Standing, good standing, good passing, good guard, right. flexible. He was more flexible than me, and I was like, kid. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was like, man, everything is against me. Damn. Damn. So, yeah, and then what was weird for me, so it was like, I got my purple right after that. So you And then I competed European some, two months later on the purple belt. How did you get on with that then? Man, like, I remember, like, I was training so hard. Because I was like, I got my purple and I was like, man, like I've, that was November. So like, uh, like half of November, December, January, yeah. and then January is European. So like, I remember for like two months and a half, I was just training hard. So like yeah. in some days I remember like when I was training, I was training so hard because I was training, like doing some solo juice at home. I was doing some like uh, physical training. I was training in the gym. Man, like, I remember there was some days where, like, I was powering on, like, Friday night, and that was, like, maybe the fourth hour, and I couldn't, pu I couldn't push anyone anymore. <laughs> so, Jeez. like, yeah, so, like, my masters were so tired, like, I but wouldn't be able to do a press-up because I was going hard every round. Too, yeah, 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 like, just too much on your body. Damn, and how did you and, get, like... <laughs> like what where was the, how come there was no balance there? Because I know I, I get it. You just got your purple belt. You want to obviously go for the Europeans, but there was no Yo, balance. I, there was no balance, basically. And you, you went through that whole camp right up to the Europeans without in. Yeah, in, like what was important is like I never I never heard about something like a camp then. Right. So it wasn't like me going like I I rest a week and then twelve weeks I'm gonna work as hard as I can. No, it was like. Tomorrow, I'm going as hard as I can because I have a competition to prepare. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. That makes sense. And how that was your first comp as a purple belt? There was first, what like, was outside of Poland. First competition this, in the purple this, belt. This was in Lisbon, right? Yeah, yeah, Lisbon. Lisbon. Listen, yeah, yeah. listen. Yeah. I'm going with my friend on our own. We're yeah. both 17. We're going to Lisbon. Nice. <laughs> first competition outside of Poland. First competition as a purple belt. And then because I was turning 18, because january and april have a birthday yeah i was still 17 but like in ibgf i was 18. right so like i did europeans and then i lost in the quarterfinal oh. and i remember like i was i was about to fight this british guy he doesn't compete now much often but like he used to be one of the best guys in uk in the blue and purple okay Good. i think his name was river river something okay but From anyway, what, yeah, like yeah. he was very good, like he was smashing everyone. And like, I remember like my friend was telling me about him and I was like, aye, aye, aye. because he was training with him. So I was like, man, first fight with like toughest dude. And then I need to like, it's my yeah. first competition. Like I'm in the plane. I never yeah. been in the plane before. <laughs> so I'm oh, like, wow. yeah, That's so like thing. everything I could get stressed about, I was stressed, stressed about, stressed. yeah. Right, okay. And I wasn't even proper, like I wasn't proper like middle weight because I was like 78 in a gi. Because I was like, I don't want to cut anymore. Yeah. Like that competition I did and I cut and like I was an indie proper. I was like, I don't wow. want to feel that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so like I got, I lost in the quarterfinal to the winner of the division. Not bad going for your first one. Yeah, not bad, not, not bad, not, yeah. Not bad and they were like, obviously like I was sad and everything because I was like, I was putting the all hard work and everything. But then my friend was like, I think we lost because we didn't compete outside of Poland even once. So he said, mm. listen, like, Let's compete as much as you can until next year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to gain that experience and we're going to do it. Yeah. And I remember like 2015, like I was competing in like all competition outside of Poland. I did it. 
Nice. nice. Uh, like, I didn't do much in Poland. I did, like, nationals, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't do, like, any small any ones. Any of the small ones. So, like, with, with you doing this training, training like a pro athlete as such, I'm guessing, like, now, now, the game's changed a lot. Now you've got things like sponsorships. Now you've got things like ambassadors programs, etc. In Poland, like I, was, I was like very lucky with that as well because like, did you have anything like yeah, that sponsorship yeah, yeah. So in, in like in 2013? I just remind myself, the guy who helped me with the trials and everything. Yeah, he owns as well the gym. He owns like the team, Copacabana team. Oh, okay. So basically, the like the big team in Poland, and basically when like I did like the Polish Cup. And like I was fighting in the absolute, and absolute yeah. in Poland was like no division and no belt. So basically, oh, I, absolute. I, like yeah, as a blue ball, like I beat two brown belts, one purple. I submit, and then I lost to the guy who was like third on the world pro in purple belts. So then after that, like he came to me and he's like, oh, like I want to help you out. I want to help you out. So like I remember, like it wasn't even like me coming to him and be like, oh, can I get sponsored? No, he just like, I wanna he just gave me like the package. Nice. He gave me the package and he goes like, you're now supported by uh, Manta. Okay. So Because a lot, lots of people don't know, but Manta is like the... The main sponsor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's yeah. like the, the Polish company. Yeah, yeah. Lots I of people know. wear Manta, but they never know it's Polish. I didn't know it's Polish. Also, it's Brazilian or something. No, no, no. no. Manta is Polish. Okay. It's from also It's like, like, yeah. Oh. And the guy used to like main person from uh copacabana team yeah yeah he owns manta with the other guy as well and then he used to do abu dhabi trials in poland warsaw once nice yeah so it's like so it helped me a lot because okay. like he was giving me the gear like all like the geese rush guard everything perfect and then in the same time he was covering all my uh if i sign up for the abgjf yes obviously like got, yeah sorry that's obviously like it's like 120 dollars at that time or something so yeah. in the pln you'll be like 120 yeah like almost 400 pln yeah so it's like he was covering that nice so he was like he was giving me that and then he said like listen wherever you go at south poland i'll cover your costs that's amazing yeah so it's like he helped me a lot it's so good it's yeah great, so like yeah. i was very lucky because yeah. like my parents always support me course with like with my choices and everything like yeah. i remember like when i was getting a bit bad my father was and my mom they always been like oh like jacob if you're gonna be good at this you don't need to go to university because in poland lots of times they push you over university yeah. but my parents was always like very supportive of that they were that's like, good that's good to have that good yeah, structure because yeah, yeah. uh yeah it's nice to, it's nice to hear that because normally you hear it the other way around where you have to go study you have to do this you have to get this degree and then after you've done that then you can go and pursue your dream yeah with me it was always supportive like opposite. whoever I needed like help or anything they always yeah. like were like oh jacob you need any help you need that you know nice. what i mean like every time it's just like they were very supportive of that i never had a problem with like sponsorship or anything because of the because he's that guy yeah yeah of the cuba Mm -hmm. because his name is Kuba as well. Kuba, okay. Kuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was so much easier because of that. That's amazing. A lot that of times so I look good. back and I'm like... So as a purple belt, I saw you, this is again when I was doing research, like you went you, you went to the States, you trained with Hamalu, you at, at GB. Because yes. obviously your school in where you was in Poland, Poland wasn't yeah. Gracie Baja, was it? it no, it, it so was... basically like, it's called Rosobak. Okay. So, like, Rosomak is under Copacabana. Right. And Copacabana is under Gracie Bar Birmingham. So, like, when I used to compete outside, so I'll represent Gracie Bar Birmingham. But wherever right. I'm in the country, I'll represent Rosomak slash Copacabana. Okay. Okay. So, the lineage is there. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. like, I was kind of and kind of not yeah, at the same time. Sense. So, it was, it was confusing. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's like, but, like, Basically, every time there would be like the seminar with Brawley Copacabana, that's yeah. when like I'll go there. So you've been Brawley a long time. Like, yeah, yeah. Before. So like, at first was only seminar in 2013, because basically we been alliance before, and then okay. like from some reason I, I don't remember what happened, but we stopped representing alliance. Okay. And then we'll be looking for the team, and Cuba again. Cuba yeah. went with the initiative, and he goes like, "Oh, like why are you guys don't gonna represent Copacabana?" I would go like, because usually there's like affiliation fees and everything. Oh, he goes, listen, yeah. like, I don't want any affiliation fee. I just want you guys to come for my, for the seminar with Braulio. 
Nice. Fair deal. Yeah. War Warsaw as well, like two, three hours away. Oh, wow. So like easy. Yeah. It's quick. Before, like if you want to learn something, there'll be like fix five, six hours. Nah, this not is always. Standard, right? Yeah, now it's yeah. just like, you just yeah. two, three hours and you're there. You know what I mean? Perfect. So it's like, yeah. So like I was very lucky because like the things with the gym, yeah. with academy was easy as well. And then like as well, like when I started getting better, like my professor, Marek, okay. he was like, listen, Jacob, you don't need to pay for the membership because I want to make sure that you have money to like, to go for the, like, for the championship. Yeah. So this way, like I can help you out a bit. Nice. So That's it's like, event. even though it was small gym, because like, we're like, I think maybe 15 people, 50 people in that time. Okay. I think around, like I never counted, but like, I feel like it's roughly, with the yeah. numbers, like I feel like that would be it. I don't know how about kids and everything, but like with adults, like I would say like 30, yeah. 50, something around nice. that. Wow. So like, I was lucky because of that. And then basically that's how I met Bradley 2013. Wow. So then like, it was easy as well to do it, to go through everything. Because mm. like, then when I was like going to Romulo, it was as well because Bradley helped me out. Okay. So like basically every time there was someone who helped me out in like every year, there was like this one or two the people. One, yeah. Yeah. Like stuck out to you. Yeah. They like yeah. helped me out. And like lots of times people don't really realize that, but like lots of times because like most of the people that succeed is most of the time because someone helped them out. Obviously there are people who they like do their things on their own and everything, but yeah. there's always this like one or two people that help out at the very beginning. Yeah. That's, that's good. It's good to have that, that mentorship. So yes. Yeah. That leader. That's going to be there for you. What was it like when you're uh, training over in North? Is it Northbridge? Norwich, Norwich, no, I think. No, yeah, no, I think that's how we say that. No, I, 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 oh, I don't uh, know. Yeah, well, uh, you uh, he's a, he's a, <laughs> I'm just but, here for five years. Yeah. <laughs> but your English is better than mine. I've been yeah, here all my Irish. life. But um, he's a beast. I'm yes, really. yes. And obviously you got rounds in with him. What, compare that to, I know you've been training with Beast all your life, but compare that to anyone that you've been with up until that point not after it was, but it was up until interesting that point. to see because like i never had like the training where we were like all the black belts you know what i mean because when i got my purple my professor got his black belt in the same time right so like i would never really have the room full of black, black belts, belts yeah. yeah and even if i were having the warsaw because i would come there like every few months to spa and like feel if i'm progressing or not yeah. just to make sure i see like i guess the black belt right. yeah so basically when I went to Romulo, like, I could actually see like the high level because people who were like training there, there was like, oh, this guy's like war pro champion in the division higher than me. This guy's like this champion, this guy's this champion. Plus you have like the Blabels war yeah. champion. And then you have like Romulo who spends the all day. Literally. And then if you skip one training, he asks you where you've been. You know what I mean? Like I remember once like I overslept one training at like, I think it was like six o'clock or seven o'clock and he yeah. goes like what happened jacob where you been where you been <laughs> ah precious straight away yeah yeah like yeah, yeah, yeah. it was good man to see because like his dedication and everything can show you like how people train and everything yeah and then in the same time i could see my level against other people because i was like i'm jacob i'm training with my professor marek mm -hmm. i'm training mainly with like the lower belt and these guys they romola baral students you know what i mean so i'm like yeah, yeah. oh like i can see like how close i am and like i was surprised because i was like everyone was like very good but like even when i was getting beaten like i wasn't beaten beaten you know what i mean like yeah. i would get beaten in like like last minute or something like that so like i was like physically maybe i'm away but technically i never think there's nothing i need to be ashamed of good. so like i remember this helped me out because like obviously i would have the achievements but you always question yourself, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I remember, like, even though, like, I won Europeans on the Purple Ball in 2016, I was yeah. like, am I really, like, I don't know, maybe I was lucky, you know mm. what I mean? Then, like, a year later, I got third, and I was like, okay, but still, maybe I was lucky to get third. And then, like, even when the World War Pro, I was like, mm, am I really, <laughs> I don't know, never, you know what I mean? Never, never, you were never yeah. satisfied. Never no, satisfied. no, like, I always yeah. question myself, I always feel like, I would never be confident enough to be like, I'm a high level guy. This is me. Yeah. I'll be like, I'm just a Jacob. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The humble. Like humble, humble, like humble, but like as well, like humble. I wouldn't know. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I wouldn't always need to reassure myself. It's like if you're checking the door, 
Did I really close them? I yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I understand completely. So one of the reasons why I want to get you down here is, is because your you, for me, your actions speak louder. And what I mean by that is, is we had a conversation the other week in training about this. And I think it's a very similar mindset to Hamlu. Yeah, how he is, how Braulio, how Braulio is as well. But you were talking about the hours you've put in, and you still do. Even as a black belt now, the hours you're constantly putting in. You get the average person that obviously progressing in jiu-jitsu, because obviously they've got their own careers outside yeah, yeah, of jiu-jitsu. Like we all, we yeah, all you know, have something. We right? all have something, right? Yeah. But you're still, to this day, coaching. You're still teaching. You're still running the school. You're still putting in the hours in. I think in one week, I think you tally, tallied up something like 18 hours a week you do or something of of, of training yourself and yeah, top of it's, like, it's like it's insane and that's something that the average person would do in a month does that make sense sometimes yeah like it's like of, I feel like lots of times people like question something like how how good a person got in the like first yeah. few months or something and they're like lots of times people don't put their math together you know what I mean yeah so it's like hundred percent if I did for the first six months of my training, like five sessions a week, it's a lot for like regular person yeah, anyway. But then like after that, I was doing all the classes I could. And I remember that was between 10 and 15. Because I remember like wherever we have like the schedule, I would do everything that was in the schedule, a part yeah. of the two morning classes that I couldn't attend because I was at school. So between like eight o'clock and 3 p.m. in Poland, I'll be at school. And then, like, I'll come home just to grab my key. Like, and I wouldn't even sit down. Maybe I'll grab something quick. Like, I will yeah. make myself a porridge or something because yeah. everything else will take too much time. Sure. And I will go by bus and everything to get there for, like, half past five to then train until 9 p.m. or something. So, like, I remember, like, one of the things that did different was, like, lots of times people do, like, the, they get to the certain level and mm -hmm. then they skip the other classes so let's say like let's say like in the morning we have beginner class yeah and we have intermediate class when people get good they go to intermediate class they don't care but about them yeah, yeah yeah and this is fine this is fine like however you like to train do it but for me i was like i need to put some hours in so i will still do a beginner class i will still do intermediate class every time so like Perfect. i remember at some point that we had the classes of like beginner intermediate advanced yeah so now we'll do all three and then at some point, my professor will run juvenile classes before. And you so do. I'll do juvenile, I'll do beginner, I'll do intermediate, and I'll do advanced. And it was because I could. I was yeah. like, that's extra hour. You know what I mean? Like, I'll you obviously... Put, you could put time in work. Yeah, in obviously I was yeah. tired, but like, I will still do it. Yeah. And everywhere I'll go by bike. But you're still... You're, <laughs> and on top of that, you're still traveling with the bike. Wow. Yeah. But like, you're doing that still to this day. Like, I see it. Like, people normally, they get their black belt. If they're not competing, they slow down a bit. You're the opposite. You're still thriving. You're still going. Um, for someone that doesn't do any striking, you've got the most black eyes I've ever seen as well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? For <laughs> just, someone just, that's, just, yeah, just a bit. Just, just a bit. Just, just, just there. And that's Nogi. Um, but it's, it's, it's good to see, like, it's a fine example to everyone not below you but everyone out there that wants to pursue a career in jiu-jitsu um and when i say a career i don't necessarily just mean an athletic career in terms of comp competing because you're doing technically you're doing both and oops sorry that's my watch <laughs> uh you're doing both in the sense where you're you competed to a very high level you're running a school to a very high level um you're putting the hours of grafting in terms of doing that. On top of that, on the weekends, which is pretty much your chill time, you're then going out running competitions and you're getting a team to go and set that up, pack it down. It's like, you're, 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 yes, you're living that lifestyle, but for people that are out there now listening to this podcast maybe and they're thinking they're, they're in their teenage years, they're coming into their later years of school and they're thinking they're not unsure of what to do or if they want to go down the college route or whatever it may be, you're a fine example and I hope like, a very good leader to them. And I'm sure the students in GB Birmingham see that as well, that you can actually, you don't need to go to school. Well, not school, but you don't need to go to college and get a degree of this because you're living that lifestyle right now and you actually speak louder. But what advice would you be giving people like that that are still struggling to make a decision on what they want to do? Because I've still got a few adults here that are still mm -hmm. thinking, can we, can we not? And in my, I always say 100%, but 
you're living proof of that for mm. someone that's come from a different country and applied his way of putting it to the UK and you're living, eating and breathing jujitsu and you're making a success of it. So see, so for me you always go like this. Like yeah. the time will pass anyway. Of course. So like if you try or not, this five years will pass anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I feel like lots of times people put themselves in a the position of either don't do it at all or do it too much. Mm. So first of all, like I was was like was fan of it that like man, it's bad for you to even like because obviously lots of people go like man, but I can't do ten sessions a week. And I can't do this. So then they, they don't want they at all. Yeah. But for me, I was like because obviously there were people who train harder than me, they train more than me, but I was like, I can do twelve sessions and I will do them. And if I'll succeed or not, I won't care. Yeah. So like my mindset was a bit different. Like I didn't do it because I want to be the best. I did it because I enjoy that. Yeah. And I thought that even if I'm going to lose in the end, nothing will change. So that's where lots of times you see people losing championships, they're losing something and then like they stop. Yeah. They tell like, I will have one week off. Like I have this for me, like it will never change. Like I will know that going. like, if I go for the championships the on Monday, I know. I will try. So nothing will change. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. I don't put pressure on me. And I feel like lots of parents as well put the pressure on the kids because they go like, man, if you win, I'm going to buy you this toy. Yeah. Shouldn't go this way. You know what I mean? Like, because lots of yeah, times people right. misunderstand the idea that like, they associate hard work with the success. Mm. But not always that success is going to be after a year. True. Like for me, like first two years, like I was sitting the wall in jiu -Jitsu. <laughs> Like, I, like, I didn't feel like I'm progressing or anything. Like, I was yeah. getting squashed by everyone, but I was like, I enjoy that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to do anyway. Massive learning. Yeah. yeah. Like, I remember, like, there was one moment when this, me and this guy, we always had, like, equal runs. And, yeah. like, I took, like, it was a month off, but, like, I was, like, week off. Like, I wasn't training proper because yeah. of summer. And he went for the summer camp, and, like, he was doing, like, three sessions a day and everything. And then he came back. Man, like, he tapped me like 12 wow. times in the five minutes. So wow. it was, yeah, 12 times wow. in the five minutes where before we had like equal rounds. And lots yeah. of people, if this will happen to them during the training, they'll be like, Giving up. I'm a loser. Like, I don't want to yeah. do it. Blah, blah, blah. They're like, man, but I'm still bad than like on the first class. So I will still do it yeah. just, just because, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, I feel like lots of times people need to understand that like, you need to push hard. Until you see the result and be happy, even if you're going to fail and it's not going to yeah. be great. You know what I mean? Like you just need to enjoy the journey more than actually the result. 100%. Because when you get the result, there's always something, you know what I mean? Like when we start Jiu-Jitsu, like if you probably like, if you have something that like you come for the first class and I record you and I say, what's your goal? You're going to say like, oh, I just want to lose some weight. Like I want to like feel better about myself. Like I want to have a community and maybe yeah. they're going to tell like, I want to feel confident. And you get this very quickly in Jiu-Jitsu. Maybe after a year, maybe a bit less. Yeah. And then the ego grows. You go like, and I want to be better than this guy. Yeah. Now I want to win championships and everything. But like, that wasn't the reason why you started. So quite often you need to remember why you started. And you need to remember that the time will pass anyway. So why not try to do something? Yeah. Because then you're going to be like, I started too late. You regret it. You, you're going to regret. regret yeah. If you're going to regret, man, do it. Yeah. Because you don't want to regret. True. It's so true. So true. And like with yourself, being in Poland, like you, you put the work in. You put the work in. You absolutely just, you know, you're doing so well. You're saying that you got your brown belt and then you made that decision to move. It wasn't uh, even that, you know, like yeah, when I got like, it was funny because like it was 2015. I still remember because I was in, like in the tube in London. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was 17, 2015. Yeah. Like, I, that was my second competition of the Europeans. Like, I won one, I lost one, get third, because there was not much people. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, I have something at least. But yeah. I wasn't feeling good about myself. And I, like, I was speaking with my friend, and he goes, like, oh, and, like, uh, I want to live from Jiu-Jitsu and everything because it was always him who was talking about like how much he wants to live from Jiu-Jitsu and everything. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Your so friend I was here like, in yeah. the UK or back home? Back home, back home. Okay. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do it as well. I, I was thinking this way, like, oh, if he can do it, like I can try as well. Like, sure. 
I don't mind, but like I will never really think about like how I make money in Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So I'll be like, yeah, you can do it, but really you're gonna probably end up having a normal job and then do Jiu Jitsu as well. And the, yeah. And basically, I remember like he explained to me like a few ideas, like seminars you can do private. He's like, you know, in UK is a bit easier because of this and this. And like I was like thinking about it, and I'm like, you're actually right, you know. Yeah. And I remember like I was in the first year of my college. Okay. And there's four. So I was like, I can do as much as I want in this three years. Like, try to push yeah. as hard as I can. Yeah. And the worst comes to the worst. I'm going to fail and I'm going to go to university. But I will try. Of course. I won't try to question myself, like, what well, if I went that way? So I remember, like, I was in the tube and, like, I was thinking, like, oh, I can do this and this and this. And then, like, I didn't know anything or anyone who helped me at that time. So it's like I was just competing, hoping for the best. Yeah. And 2015 November, which is very funny in the way because like there was no one that was probably coming for the seminar. Yeah. While my friend was going to Dublin. Okay. So they invited him for the tournament in Dublin. And my other friend was in the, I think it's Italy. He was in the Milano, I think. Okay. As well for the tournament. So I was the only one from that three that state yeah. to do seminar. And one of the funny things is that, like, my friend messaged me and he goes, listen, like, they need someone from Dublin and, like, you can come there, do a seminar and win the cash prize. And I was really tempted to do it, but then at the same time, I had, like, book hotel with my friend for, for Browdy seminar. So sure. it was like, I wish to do it, but, like, I cannot maybe next time. Because I was always the person that they like yeah. to put someone in the, like, in the bad spot. So, like, let's say it's two days. You and me going somewhere, and then like, listen, Pindi, I, I can't, can't do it, it because yeah. I have this and this. Like, I never like to be that person. So yeah. it's like, okay, I will do it next time, but I will stay for Brothers Seminar and do it everything. And yeah. then there was not much people in the normal sessions because Brother used to do like normal sessions, for, like two two days normal sessions seminar, okay. and then he would fly out. So in this session, it's like I was almost the highest belt. Okay. And like I was the only competitor. So again, like this guy Kuba. Yes. Who was the owner of Copacabana and everything. Yep. He told the Braulio, listen, Jacob is good. I roll with him. And I remember, like, I rolled with Braulio. And then, basically, after the roll, like, Braulio started to talk to me. Braulio's like, man, like, you need to you need to visit me in Birmingham. I mean, like, I didn't speak English. So, like, I could hardly understand him. What so, you when you were saying, like, something to me, like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, like... He would tell me, like, so, like I, w I thought he's joking for the first two days. Yeah. And then on the seminar, he goes, like, do you have WhatsApp? Well, it was WhatsApp. It's like, message me here and here. And then, like, I started talking with him. And, like, yeah. I remember, like, I need to use a Google Translator. Oh, okay. Because I wouldn't, like... Didn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, like, I would understand what you're saying, but, like, I wouldn't be able to reply. Like, my so. English was at the level where, like, I could understand you. Yeah. Half and half, like... Half, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll get the idea what we're talking about. And then I'll be like, okay. So he said to me, like, to visit him. But, like, I couldn't visit him until Europeans. And then, like, I went for the Europeans. Mm -hmm. I won the Europeans. Nice. That year. So, like... This is Purple Belt. That was Purple Belt yeah. still, yeah. So, like, after a year of trying the competition and everything, I went 2016. And I won the Europeans. And then, like, that was crazy. And then a week later, I went to Braulio. I met Victor as well. Like, I was in his academy and everything. And they're like, he was all the time asking me, like, what are you doing after you uh, like, finish school? And like, ah, I've just had two years or something. It's yeah. like, man, like, when you finish your school, come to me and be in Birmingham. I was like, oh, okay. But, like, again, the way how I understood that wasn't like, Jacob, come to me. It was more like, Jacob, you can train with me. Ah, so okay, okay. so basically so you, yeah so basically when like when I saw him 2016 November a year later yeah. and he was asking me like oh you preparing yourself blah, blah, blah. and I'm like yeah like I'm trying to get the money and I'm gonna find a job and then I'm gonna do it and Bravo was like no 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 like why won't you just work for me and then you can sleep in my house yeah why won't you do it this way I said oh I can. <laughs> so like then you, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so then like it, then I, it clicked then yeah, you, so, yeah, yeah. It click and I was like oh okay so then like 2017 August I moved to Birmingham so five years ago 
Wow. Wow. I never looked back since. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Literally. And when did you get your brand belt then? Was that before I, you came I to Birmingham or before. after? I just got before. So like I came back. From your professor in? From my professor Maric. in Poland. Yeah. Maric. So like 2017, I came back from the World Championships. I won World Pro that year, but like I lost the World Championships in the second round. I came back to Poland and then like I think after a month or two, like before I went to UK, um, yeah. I got my brand built. Nice. And it's like what's crazy about this as well is that like in 2015, I wasn't doing great in the competition outside of Poland. So like I was getting second, I was getting third. But until 2016, I never win like the like IBGF. I never won the title. Like title was like London Open, Rome yeah. Open. Like I was coming out short in like second or third. And then, like, I did 2015, like, by the end of the year, I did London Open, and I won. Uh -huh. And this was, like, my first championship. And then, like, I remember, like, when I was going for the Europeans 2016, I don't know why, but I was su super confident. Something happened, something clicked, and, like, everything was going the way how it's supposed to. So, like, I remember, like, 2015, I couldn't win the trials. Like, I got second in my mm. division. I lost to someone. Like, I don't even know the guy. And okay. then, like, I lost the open class as well. So I couldn't get my flights to Abu Dhabi. Oh, man. And then, like, after November 2015, something changed. Something just clicked. That was the time when, like, everything started going well. So, like, 2016, I won Europeans. And, like, I remember, like, I think, like, I lost one fight in 2016. What was the thing that clicked? I don't know, man. Like, I just, like, so, I, mean, I feel like I knew where my level is because, right. like, I was second and third, blah, blah, blah. I started doing well against the black belts. Okay. And I start, like, I think mentally as well, grow a bit more. So, like, I was like, I'm stronger a bit. Yeah. Like, my head was stronger as well. So, like, and I think experience as well, you know? Because if you think yeah. about this, like, before before that, I never competed in South Poland. So, like, I was even worried if they pronounce my name properly by the microphone. Like, yeah. My name, if you read my name, is hard. You know what I mean? Like, it's very easy that's, to say. That's why when I when we started the podcast, I just said, Jacob, because <laughs> I can't say your name. Yeah, Zajkowski. It's easy to say. It's easy to say, but like, if there's just, like, yeah, yeah. Z-A-J-K-O-W-S-K-I. You know what I mean? Like, you would never say, this is how you say that name. Nah, I never thought that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was like worried. I was like, man, like, why? Gonna someone's not going to read my name. Yeah, yeah. and then I would get the cute, and then all this money, they're going to go and then it's not their fault yeah yeah i hear i hear but you then making that decision obviously you met bralia you, yes you, I met made bralia. you made that decision to be like right i'm gonna go uk once you find out you're actually gonna get a job not yeah just, yeah not, like not, not not just to train but you made that tough decision back home I'm gonna leave college I'm gonna finish school i, I well, finished finish, finish, well, finish finish college but not gonna pursue no university not gonna pursue university but i still did uh i still did um how you call it we have the test to university yeah. before you make one, and I still do, did it. Okay. Because my parents were like, "Listen, like maybe if you if it doesn't work out, just do you it still because you back. can come back and then like you don't need to do the exam again." I know your parents are dead supportive of everything that you've done all your life, but how was it, it telling them, "Hey, I'm off now. I'm going to the UK." No, they yeah. were like, they were actually happy for me because oh, they wow. were like, "Yeah, they were like, man, like great." Because they wow, were like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, like I remember, I like they couldn't believe it because they were like, "Are you actually going?" <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm like, yeah, like, are you actually gonna get paid, or you just going there and you're gonna come Did back? You, yeah, 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 like I think maybe my parents probably thought that I'm gonna come back at some point. They thought like I'm gonna come back like just in the bruises, like yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. bad shirt, like dirty. Nah, 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 nah. But it's good. It's good that you've got that support network, and then obviously. I, I'm pretty sure in saying that it's probably no different, but how was it then coming here in 2017, adjusting to everything, the lifestyle here, because obviously the weather's the weather, the people are people, but, learning language, yeah, speaking the see, language, all of it. This is like, because like I said, for yeah. all the process, like I always have someone who support me, right? So like support yeah. me, like, not like in terms like, here's some money, Pindi. No. But it's more like, I always have like, I always met some friends, Hmm. So like at the very beginning, like I met someone that like I will go for the competition with and then that was before, right? Like yeah. white belt, blue belt. And then on the purple belt, you remember like that moment when I said like when my friend was going to Dublin. Yeah. So basically after Europeans, I met these guys. 
And I'm okay. still like very good friends with them. So they running the competition in Ireland mm -hmm. and they were the first people, that was the first time when I was making some money from Jiu Jitsu. Wow, because they're So like, yeah. yeah, so like they would go like, oh, like you can come to the gym and like run some privates, like you nice. can referee, you can like help us with the event. So like basically had the taste of the life that I do now. Yeah, before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, in 2016, I'll go to Dublin eventually, like occasionally, and then like I'll go there for a week or two, and then like I'll do some like privates. They were like I'll do like some big seminar, yeah, and then like they will always help me out. You know what I mean? So like they'll go like, oh Jacob, you can help us with this, like oh you want to work for this, so like you can get extra cash and everything. Of course, so of course. had a taste of the life because Ireland is very similar to UK. Mm. They had it to understand, which at the very beginning I didn't know. Very fast. Yeah, they're very fast. They speak yeah. very fast. And then like, that was the time when I as well, like started learning English because I was like, oh, I need to teach. Yeah. So my English needs yeah. to get better. And at the same time, I was like, I'm going next year to UK. So I need to prepare myself of course. because I didn't want to be the person that comes, gets you help. Like you say to me, Jacob, like, I want you to help me out with my gym. And then I'll come here and I'll, I know nothing. You know what I mean? So like I prepare myself. Like That's good. I check everything before and I'm like, yeah. okay, so I can do this way, this way. So like I always try to like people who help me out. I wanted to make sure that like they don't feel bad about helping me. Yeah. And I feel like this is what other thing that lots of people don't understand. It's like I'm helping you out, but like help me out as well. You know what cool. I mean? It like, goes two ways. It yeah, yeah. It always ways. needs to work two ways. If, the, if it works one way, it's not going to work out, right? Yeah. So basically, like I was spending in the island, like I think like before I came to UK, I was there three or four times. So like I already had like, uh, let's say a month, it. a month of experience. We're talking, like speaking English. And then like at the very beginning, obviously I need to have like the thing on my phone. I was like, okay, how do you say this? Because I would say my English was okay, but like I wouldn't know when to use a certain tense. So I would say like, I will. I was, and that's all. I was going there. I will go there. Okay. I will grab. I was about to grab. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but that was yeah. it. Like, there will be nothing like, it works. It was like, it will work. <laughs> but, so, but English is very simple language. Of course. So, like, compared people to... still understand me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, compared to Polish. <laughs> yeah, compared to Polish or even Portuguese. Oh, yeah. Portuguese and other... Hard do, language, do you, man. Speak, do you speak... In... Nah, nah, nah. Understand just, it a bit? Just about words. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, I'm trying to learn it at the moment. Are you? I went, yeah, I went, I've been to Lisbon a few times now to visit Victor's new school. Bom dia. Um bola, por favor. That's all. Obrigado. That's, all, yeah. Obrigado. Obrigado. That's it. That's it. That's my Portuguese then. But yeah, trying to learn that because obviously when... Obviously, I went to a few of the Victor's classes whilst I was there. And obviously, he has to speak Portuguese. Oh, no, that was stress. Yeah, even, I See, like, I can understand the context. Yeah. Just from being with Braulio and around Brazilians. Yeah. But, like, that's, I that's, would... Yeah, I couldn't have a conversation, but you can understand. Nah, nah, nah. You just, yeah. you can just, you just can tell they make fun of me. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to go Rio. Yeah. We will go, we'll go. But um, when did you, you, you came in 2017, straight onto the Matt's teaching. Was it that or was it a build up? Yeah, so like was it a build, 2017, slow build up? I had a morning flight and then like I came to UK and then basically I remember like Bradley was like, oh man, like I overslept. Like, Standard. can you come here? Like, just get a taxi. Couldn't find a taxi rank. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went for the girl to like help me out. Yeah. And she's talking to me and I'm like, she's no saying, idea. What, what is she saying? saying? Like, I have yeah. no idea. She's like, oh, you leave a taxi rank, eh? <laughs> Taxi. Taxi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and it then, was hard, but like somehow I got there. Yeah. And then like we did a class, trained a bit with Braulio. And then like I remember he was saying to me, like, I need to go for the weekend. So listen, don't go hard to them. Don't heel hook them. Be nice guy. That's all he said to me. And then he went to the seminar. So like, cool. yeah. So literally, so after a week, yeah, yeah, yeah. You straight in. Straight, straight in. in. Yeah, but it was easy it. because like people were friendly. Yeah. People in Birmingham speak very slow. Yeah. No? Th they yeah. do. They do. It's not Liverpool. Oh, no. That's hard. That's, yeah. that's really fast. Yeah. yeah. True, You're true. all right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's very, yeah, it's very slow. Like, yeah. I can get this. Yeah. 
That makes sense. Yeah, I've never thought of it. I've always thought of it. Was but see, like at the very beginning, like I couldn't say like difference between the accents. Like yeah. I remember like I was in Starbucks, like it's my first month. Yeah. And I seriously thought that lady is making fun of me. The way, because the way how she spoke, I was like, do I sound like this? Does she tries to make fun of me, like how I speak? But that was just, <laughs> just, just, yeah, just her just accent, it, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for me, it sounds like funny, but like, but this is the way how you speak. Makes sense, fair enough, that's yeah. cool. So, obviously, you, you started a fresh new, not career, but you've started a fresh new chapter in your life, coming to the UK, you've gone into the deep end of coaching, still competing as a brand belt, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and just before COVID, wasn't it? It was just before the pandemic, 2019, you got your black belt? Yes. So a couple of years later, you got your black belt, obviously competing. And then that's when I started, like, obviously understanding who you were. Because obviously before, in 2017, 18, I, I, I didn't have that much connection with yourself. But it wasn't until 19-ish when I first started seeing, obviously, everything you were achieving. I was like, wow. And literally, I'll be on Instagram on a weekend and you'll be, you'll be going there, competing got gold there competed got gold there competed and that was as a brand and a black obviously from the outside point of view from my point of view it's like you're just constantly dominating the scene mm. was that how it was for you is it or was it just so it was, like, it was, it was, it was every weekend you were just yeah so it's like it was funny in a way because like when in 2017 i got my brand built yeah it's like man like i'm ready to go i'm gonna do like everything like i can properly train like i have a good spine upon this like yeah. good like higher Higher, higher belt, belt. Yeah, higher yeah, belt, yeah. you know what I mean? So I was like, okay, let's do it, let's do it. And then like, I got injured. I got injured in uh, 2017, my neck. I was competing in Poland, one month in UK. This is like my first month in UK. I was trying to take the guy back. And then it's not, it's not his fault. It was just, he basically lost his balance. And then like, wow. imagine close guard, I'm upside down. And then I fall like this on the floor. <clears throat> Like, I was sure, like, I was sure I'm going to be paralyzed. So, like, first Jeez. thing, checking my feet. Do I move them? Okay, I'm not paralyzed. Good. Okay. So, I was doing this. So, like, I couldn't compete proper. So, like, I remember, like, Bramble, 2017 yeah. and 18 was a tough time for me because I was like, I need to compete. Mm -hmm. But, like, I couldn't do lots of things. Like, I remember, yeah. like, I enjoyed my hands as well. So, like, first was my neck. I can't invert. I was just inverting on the purple belt. Then my hands, I can't play sleeve. I need to grab the lapel. That's what, that's what happened I, to the hands. Just, just. I train, one getting your trousers. So like I remember, like this one was like that. Now is not. Yeah, yeah. But like yeah. Uh, four, I can show you there. But basically, it was like properly swollen. So like I couldn't grip, oh, and then man. I couldn't grip on the right. So these two out, oh. just just the belt or the collar. So that's the that's why my style a bit changed as well because I couldn't relay all my attributes that I had before. And this was as well, like, 2017, 18 was like, it wasn't great for me. Because if you think about this, 2016, European champion, it's world pro champion, yeah. yeah. And then, like, it looks good on the data, because it's like 2018, world pro, uh, no world pro champion, third on the world pro. Yeah. But everything else I lost on the big comps. So, like, I was doing, on the local scene, I was beating people. But yeah. then, like, Europeans, I lost. World Championships are lost. And then, like, I got the, like, War Pro Bronze in 2018. So it looks good. It looks good on the data. Yeah. But in my mind, I was like, Not that's happy. bad. Not that's bad. Yeah. And then 2019, in January, Europeans, lost. March. And it was funny in the way, because, like, I'd always this, like, awkward positions where, like, Someone should get the points or shouldn't. And they're like, there was like two or three situations like this. So remember when Bravo spoke to me in July that year, 2018, yeah. and he goes like, do you want to get a black belt or you want to spend one more year on the brown belt and make sure you get something extra from the titles? I'm like, nah, just give me a black belt because I can't stand these referees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was like, yeah. I want to make sure like I have a proper ref as well. Because yeah, like some, yeah. sometimes things happen, you know what I mean? Of and course, then of like, course. Why not is on the same certain like competitions like color belts are not taken as serious as a black belt. It's like blue belt and brown belt, they treat the same. And then you get your black belt and everyone start caring, you know what I mean? Like I remember yeah. like as a brown belt, I would do like the some like IBGJF or something and they would yeah. go like you need to be on the mat in like two minutes and I would like, No, no, like I can rest eight minutes. So like shouldn't be that way. No, 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 you need to jump on, otherwise you get the cute. 
Same thing on the black bolt. They go like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to wait. We're going to wait. I'm going to give even like extra five for you. Yeah, so it's like wow. the, you, as a black bolt, you just treat you just treat you them just treat different. Differently. Yeah, yeah, because there's not that many competing of them. You know what I mean? Mm. So like no one wants to have like less black bolts on the championship. Sure. So that was the time when I was like, same mindset as I had in 2015, 2018. I was like, man, like I need to do as many championships as I can. So I'm ready for the Europeans and everything. And like, again, something in 2019, like September or something, something clicked. Again, something clicked. Yeah. And since then, like, I was like, never the same like before. So in the Bramble, I didn't understand much things that Bradley was like trying to tell me. Yeah. It wasn't because I didn't want to listen. I was like... Just understand it was different. I just don't understand what you're saying, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can get the examples. Like, I can copy the idea that you showed me. So it's like, move the cup this way. Okay, I will move. But like, I wouldn't get the idea. Like, why? Can, yeah, why? Why, 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 why this way, not yeah. other way? So like, I would relate on the certain examples rather than like trying to create something yeah. that I understand. So... I got to the point where I started competing, and I remember September, like I did my super fight. Like that was like a super fight that I invited me for. So I was like, oh, it's like at Black Bull debut, I would do it. And then after that, I was competing almost every weekend. So like I remember September. If you look on my Instagram in 2019 September, it's like this: it's super fight. Week late is London Open. Mm -hmm. So I won my division, got second in the Open class. Then I did. I flew, I think, to Rome or somewhere. I don't even remember yeah. now. But like, if you look on my Instagram, yeah, it's like London, it. Rome. No, it was like this. September was or October. It was like, I remember Super Fight. London, Rome, London. Then I went to Amsterdam. Yeah. Then I went to Paris. Then I went to Dublin. And again, Dublin, I was visiting my friends as well. So like I was visiting my, because I'm yeah. still like in a good relation with them. That was the last time when I was there. Oh, wow. I need to visit them actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been like almost three years. Jeez. We seen each other on the British Open last year, but it's like, it's still you know, Corona and everything messed up the thing. Things a bit. So yeah, so like I was doing like every weekend and then like I did Europeans. Then I did Munich and then I did Grand Slam. And I remember like after Grand Slam, Corona thing started, like we yeah. supposed like there was no audience and I won Grand Slam and then after that there was like a week or two that we supposed to be locked and I remember because I was competing so much I was like I'm glad because mentally like I was like tired yeah because like you're competing every course, weekend course, you know what I mean like it, yeah. so it's like even though it's not that much fights not as much as in training but just you're thinking still... about yeah just thinking about it like be stressed yeah, be stressed day before yeah. you know what I mean like think about like oh man like I need to fight I need to fight you know what I mean yeah and it's too much on your head it's too much yeah. too much mentally and it's just like obviously like I was in the open class and everything but like in my division I only lost twice I think wow. I lost Europeans and Europeans yeah so like two times I lost semi-final in the Europeans in my division everything yeah. else is open class where I lost Jeez. so in Amsterdam I lost semi-final of open class London I lost the uh, final of open class yeah so like i think I five losses i think i have or six in total i don't remember wow. there's some obviously this, there's some yeah. championships like if you look on the bjj heroes there are some of them they're not included because yeah. the competition are not that big so like they're not included but like i think like i have like quite a lot yeah yeah two in my division i lost wow yeah that's good that's good yeah, going. It's, that's it's good, good going it's good. that's good going yeah and the reason I was bringing that up now, obviously you as a as, as a black belt now. So I had this conversation with you recently because where where do you where where are you feeling everything now? Because like I sometimes when I come class early or sometimes when I've got a private with Bralia and um, he's on time, uh, <laughs> always but always on time. Um, I watch you roll and you're like the slickest. We say this, we say it like you. We compare you to like a Thai fighter. You know when you see the Thai guys in Thailand and they're sparring. They've got no expression. It looks like they're using no effort, but they're still kicking the fuck out of you, yeah? You're the same as that in jiu-jitsu. Remember, like, I was, I was speaking to Jamie. Speaking to Jamie, there's some others I was speaking to the other day, and we were just watching you, like, there's no expression, there's a slick movement, but you're still squashing, squeezing. Your game is just, like, in my opinion, just crazy at the moment. But you're not competing. Where what? Where's your mindset in terms of competition at the moment? Is it you're not feeling it as much? Is you stepping away from it, or is it you're just waiting for the right moment? What I see. So like 
for for me it's a strange one as well yeah. because like right now like i didn't compete much since like february i didn't like i just competed not... this year just february I, that's all that's it that's it this year yeah i get wow. third on the europeans and that's it and wow. i didn't compete and they like i don't feel it right now not not, not uh, yeah but like because i i when i when i used to compete in and not in judo in thai I, I people ask me how come you're not doing it. Nice, I'm honest. I, before I had the fire in my belly. Yeah, it was just I was like driven, desire. Wanted to go all the time. Doesn't matter how I was feeling. I could have a injury here. I'll still go. My mindset was that. Now I just don't have that oomph in me. That fire's gone out of my belly to compete. I'm loving the training though. I'll train every day. I'll train mm -hmm. every class pretty much. But in the terms of that competition, in terms of MMA or Muay Thai, I don't have that. Is that the same sort of thing you're going through? Or is it it's, I think it's very not? similar. It's yeah. very similar because like the way how I think, like how you, how I realize with myself is that like, I remember like when I was, when I moved to UK yeah. and then like, I enjoyed the training. Like I was happy, like man, like I wasn't doing yeah. that well in the competition. Like I said, in 2018, 17, yeah. like 2018. Sem yeah. Uh, half of 2019 so like year and a half but like it didn't bring me down you know what i mean lots of times people still like get a bit lost and they're like they don't feel the same with me yeah. like i was happy i was happy like right. i was like man like i'm coming i'm teaching like i don't need to do like no more job you know what i mean yeah. like i do it because i want you and i still what, put the hard work do. because like i said like this is it like in, yeah. yeah and so like I, I thought maybe if I'm winning all the time, I'm going to be even more happy, right? It makes sense, right? Like you're a very happy person. Some people think like, oh, I'm very happy. If I get a lot of money, I'm going to be even happier. And they're like, you don't really. No. You know what I mean? Like the same thing with that. Like I started winning and everything and it didn't feel any, any different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I enjoy, but then like it's hard. And competing is hard as well. Of course. You know what I mean? So like when Corona thing happened and everything, I thought... I thought I'm going to be missing something, right? Because, like, I competed since 15, so, like, 24, and I'm like, man, like, I'm going to feel this. I was doing yeah. this for nine years, and then, like, nothing. So, I was like, no, 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 he's going to come back. I did, like, like, the local competition before British Open, nothing. I did British Open, nothing. Man, that's weird. It's like, I'm going to do, like, big comp, Europeans. I'm going to feel something. Nah. No, no difference. You know what I mean. So it's like I know I'm young, so, I'm, and I don't think it's a burnout as well because burnout will be when you don't want to train. Yeah. But my routine never changed. It's just the actual desire yeah, of like, the comp. Yeah, I'm doing like all the time walk as to inform performance the same way as I did before. I see. When it. I was competing. It's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like nothing changed really. Yeah, you're still destroying everyone on the mats <laughs> in comp class. In comp class, you see it on. This, you just need to follow Jacob or GB Birmingham. You see it, your routine daily. You're constantly there. Ten o'clock at night, you're in the gym, squatting. Oh and yeah, if I, I need to, if I, I need to, I'm trying not to. Yeah, like I don't. Uh, yeah, always. I'll be getting in from the from from teaching all day, and I'm knackered, and then I'll go onto Instagram just to kind of like wind down, and you're there live. In pure, is it pure or something? Pure gym, Where, pure wherever gym, yeah, you are. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. next yeah. to my house, that's why. Yeah, <laughs> squatting at 10 o'clock at night. I'm just like, Jesus Christ, didn't this guy sleep? But anyway, yeah. Yeah, but see, like, it all comes as well from, uh, because informed performance mm -hmm. helps me, right? The supporting, yeah. they help yeah. me with the program and everything. So this is the same thing, like I said at the very beginning. I don't really like to, when someone helps me. Let them know. And I don't do it, you know what I mean? So, yeah. like, I have a workout from them, so... Sometimes I don't want to walk out. Sometimes I'm tired. But then I'm like, I'm going to do it after the session if I want to or not because they're helping me. Of course. I need to do it. Not, yeah, be yeah, yeah. not because I want to get stronger or something. It's more about me showing that I'm doing Your it. Your respect towards Yeah, 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 yeah my of respect course. towards Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. it makes perfect sense. And now, like, no, it's good. It's, it's nice to hear that because you get it all the time with athletes where they're like, they don't, they're not open and honest enough to be to tell the truth about how they're feeling about competing or not mm -hmm. competing and it's, i appreciate you being honest and saying that desire is just not there right now will it come back only you will know that yeah yeah it I might, mean, it it may, 25 it, you know what it, I mean? yeah you look 35 but anyway <laughs> but no yeah it could come back it may it may not but that's that's you as an individual and you've achieved hell of a lot um 
in 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 already what nine years of competing in jiu-jitsu and dedicating your life to it and mm. now you're doing in my opinion you're doing something far better in the sense where you're giving back you're giving back to every single member that walks in into onto the mats at gb birmingham the amount of competition i can't keep up with what you guys do on a weekend i'll be honest with you one day you're mm. saying you're getting ready for a competition i don't know in Nottingham the next day you're d doing the competition over there and it's just like I can't keep up but it's it's how are you balancing it all because you're co going from coaching on a Friday straight loading a van up lastminute.com and then going to set an event up is this how you where did that all come about in terms of doing all these events as well on the weekend like, like I said like I already it's experienced it. that before because yeah. like when I used to like help out for like uh with my friends yeah, yeah. like Sherry the brothers like John and Patrick like yeah. I used to help them out with setting up the mass and everything so like for me it's, it's normal no, like no, yeah no like difference. I'm used to it I'm used to it yeah you know what I mean so like yeah, I could good. I could feel my routine since the beginning if I'm gonna like it or not you know what mm. I mean because sometimes people do something yeah and they need to really try to know if they really like it or not some sure. people expect that i'm gonna love it but then they do it and they're like oh man like i don't really enjoy that yeah so yeah so like for, with me it's easy because like i always knew how it is plus it's not hard you know what i mean like i feel like setting up the venue is easier than actually competing there yeah. like i mean no one no one is trying to competing with me how to fold the mats yeah no one is there and goes like Here's Let's barrier. do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's gonna load more mats? Yeah, whole bro is never gonna say that. That's it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude. Medal. There you go. Gold medal. <laughs> gold medal. You get it. No, it's cool, man. But no, that's that's honestly, this is why one of the main reasons I want to get you on, Jacob, is because you're living proof that there is a career. There is there is more to martial arts than just being on the mats and training. You're 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 eating and breathing it you're living that lifestyle you're successful in it um and and one of the main reasons is, is simply because i want i want the listeners out there the viewers that are watching this at home or wherever they are to see you and to be like not necessarily want to be like i want to be like but be like okay yes i could go to college yes i could go to university yes i could get a job working nine to five i don't know doing something and then doing jiu-jitsu outside but it's to see and be like look guys you can do it if you put your heart and soul into it there is something out there for you guys whether that's in jiu-jitsu whether that's another martial art that you are, are doing and my message is, is simply and one of the reasons why i started this podcast is because martial arts is much bigger than just the actual what you do on the mats it's actually that there's careers out there for you guys there's a lifestyle out there for you guys you can you can be happy doing something you love and that's living proof right here with you jacob um and i just want to say thank you for obviously given us the time and the opportunity to come on to do this podcast as well. Um, but where does the future lie with you? Is there anything exciting happening in the future that you want to share with the audience? Obviously, we've talked about competing, um, but in terms of like seminars or anything like that, you've got lined up. Is there anything at the moment or is it just? So I know that I'm doing seminar in November on the yeah. Isle of Men. Is it how you say that? I, Isle of Man. Isle of Man. Okay. Okay. Is that um, oh, who's who's cool if I forget? Uh is that Conrad? Yes. Is that Conrad. Yes, uh, yes, yeah, yes, Isle yes. Man. So, so I'm, so I'm gonna be there in November. Uh me and Brown are planning to do something, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. on Monday we're gonna know if it's official or not. Brilliant. If we get assigned, that's nah, when it's official. Guys, look out for Jacob's uh Jacob's uh Instagram. Give give everyone your details. What's your Instagram at uh, Jacob? How do you say you said that Jitsu? I think so. I don't. Like, they say like yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. even remember. There you go. But okay, the, I'll, we'll, 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 I'll I'll tag it in when I when I post this podcast. But no, Jacob, thank you so much for for coming all the way to Coventry to do this podcast. I appreciate your time, brother, uh, and thank you, man. Okay.